Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say Alexa or Hey Google, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Also, visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetodaypodcast.com. And while you're there, make sure you visit the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And don't forget, join the Corvette Today Facebook group. We have over 3,000 members, and I'd love to have you as a member as well. I'm also excited to tell you about the new YouTube channel for Corvette Today. See your favorite Corvette Today podcasts now on YouTube. First, I'd like to thank our flagship sponsors of Corvette Today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique design styles to choose from for your C8 and wide body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an absurd value starting at only $19.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And now use the new promo code CT111, that's CT111, and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com, that's A-E-R-O-L-A-R-R-I.com, with the new promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. Also, Corvette Fever Magazine. Corvette Fever has been relaunched with an online and printed version. The online version has incredible interactivity with hidden photos and information, and the printed version is nothing like you've ever seen before, huge and glossy. Get your free online version at CorvetteFeverMag.com. You can also sign up for the printed version there as well. Corvette Fever Magazine, come along for the ride. Also, MidEngineCorvetteForum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. Also, a shout out to canadiancorvetteforum.com, welcoming Corvette owners from around the world. My guest on today's show runs what is called the Super Bowl of Car Shows. It's the ultimate gathering place for car enthusiasts who have a passion for horsepower, and it's a can't-miss event every November. He's the managing member of the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, Mr. Bob Ashton. Bob, welcome to Corvette Today. I'm honored to be with you. I enjoy listening to your cast, and let's get to talking about some cars. That sounds good. Well, thanks for being on the show with me, Bob. Talk about your early years growing up. What was your first introduction to cars? Well, I grew up in a car family. I'm from the Detroit area, and my father was actually the vice president and general manager for Chrysler Insurance Company out of Detroit area. He worked in Highland Park. Wow. So uh, he was an executive out there. So one of the cool little benefits of that job was the fact that we actually had three company cars at all times. So he had his own design car. He would get a new one, believe it or not, every two months. Amazing. So he would get a car. And then we would fill out an order form for the next car. So it was an ongoing thing. So we'd have five or six new cars for him. Then my mother had a leased car for quite some time was a station wagon. But then she ended up with some pretty prime muscle cars, which we'll probably talk about. And then my older brother also had a leased car. So we had quite a variety of cars, Chrysler products, needless to say. That's kind of what planted the seed for me in the muscle car world. That's amazing. So talk about your introduction into muscle cars, Bob. Well, as I say, I was born in 1960, so I was a little bit behind as far as being of driving age and all that. But, boy, I can remember the colors and the cars. And we used to have the dealer order data books, and that's how we used to order the cars. My older brother started out as being the consultant for my dad because, believe it or not, my dad wasn't much of a car guy. Huh. He was a dyed-in-the-wool Chrysler guy, even to the point where if you pulled up in a new Impala and put it in the driveway and said, hey, Dad, look at the new Dodge out in the driveway, he probably wouldn't have noticed. No kidding. Wow. But my brother, who was four years older than me, he was at the prime age. So in the late 60s, he was driving. So when he was able to get a lease car and get his hands on those order sheets, that's where it started. 340 darts, dusters, demons, we had them all. That's amazing. Now, talk about your introduction to Corvettes then. How'd you get from those cars to Corvette? 
Well, I think it goes back to that same time period because we both know the sounds and the sights and the smells that we all can remember like it was yesterday. Well, up the street from me was a gentleman who worked at the GM Tech Center. His daily driver was a Monaco Orange 69 427 435 Corvette Coupe. Wow. And I can remember that car driving by my house like it was yesterday because that thing would just shake the ground. And I would sit there on my Stingray bike and I'd hear him fire that car up from up the street and I would just stop and wait for him to drive by. So it was like such a cool car. So, and then when I saw my first mid year, it was a 63 split window. So again, it's like, what the heck is this? And that would have been in the late 60s. And again, these are the memories you just never forget. It feels like it was yesterday when I saw that car and I could know it was a Sebring Silver. It was a four-speed. It had a black interior. And I remember looking at that back compartment thinking, wow, is that cool? That's kind of where it all started for me in the Corvette world. That's the same for me, Bob, because the first car that got me into Corvettes was that 63 split window. And I was just amazed. And I love that. Those are are some great memories. Talk about some of the things that you did as a child that kind of got you into the automotive industry where you really got into Corvettes and muscle cars. Did you guys, you and your brother, maybe attend car shows, stuff like that? Well, I was really into my Stingray bike, even back then, because like a lot of kids, when that orange crate came out, I wanted one. Yeah. My dad took me up to our local Schwinn dealer, which was not too far, and actually still exists to this day, took me up there, and, and I tell people, when I saw that ad in Boys Life magazine with the kid sitting at the drag strip next to the rail on his orange crate, I said, Dad, Dad, I got to get one of these bikes. And had a birthday coming up, so you know, convinced him it was time for me to get this new bike. Well, long story short, we walked in. He looked at the price tag. It was eighty two ninety five in nineteen sixty nine. Wow! It was like it's not going to happen. You aren't getting a hundred dollar bike. But I did end up leaving the bike shop with a shiny blue Stingray Deluxe. Next best thing, but I always wanted to have a crate bike. So I would ride my bike everywhere. Across the street from my subdivision is the Packard Proving Grounds. Oh, There was an annual show there, which was called Carnival of Cars. And I used to ride my bike up there. I would jump the cyclone fence to get into the car show and see all these amazing cars. And at that time, there were a lot of classics there. And it was a pretty diverse show. So there would be some newer stuff. But of course, a little early on the muscle car end. I remember seeing like 55 T-Birds, but a lot of classics, Packards, Duesenbergs, big Buicks and that. So it was like, wow, this car thing's pretty cool. There's such diversity. And I just loved the lines and hearing the engine. So I did that every year for quite a few years years. That's kind of another part of where my passion for all things automotive started. Man, those are some great memories, Bob. Well, I tell you what, let's take our first break. And in section number two, we're going to talk about the beginnings of muscle cars and Corvette Nationals here on Corvette Today. VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25. And every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. MidAmerica Motor Works has been the industry leader and aftermarket supplier and manufacturer of Corvette replacement parts and accessories since 1974. We have what you need for all years and generations of Corvette. Whether you need a door panel or a seat cover for your C1 Corvette or the latest shirt, jacket, hat, or lifestyle accessory to complement your new C8, you can get it at MidAmerica Motor Works. So if you're restoring, repairing, replacing, or simply researching your Corvette, MidAmerica Motor Works is the place to go. Visit our website at mamotorworks.com and shop Corvettes by generation or specific year. Or call us Monday through Saturday, toll-free at 800-500-1500 and talk to one of our Corvette experts to help you get the right part or accessory. Pursue your passion with Mid-America Motor Works. This is the Corvette Today podcast with Steve Garrett. 
Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me today is the managing member of the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, Bob Ashton. In this second segment, we're going to talk about the early beginnings of that show. Bob, talk about what prompted you to start a show like the Muscle Cars and Corvette Nationals. Well, I was always a car show guy and, you know, being from the Detroit area, of course, I used to go to Detroit Autorama and a new car show and all that. I was always fascinated by being able to see all the shiny chrome and new things that were coming out and whatnot and those hot rods. So I ended up as a kid, for some odd reason, it was my dream to become a car salesman. I didn't want to be a baseball player or a football player. I don't know why, but for some reason I decided I needed to be a car salesman. I originally had plans to go to Northwood Institute out here in Michigan and and get a degree in automotive marketing. Well, I was running a ski shop while going to high school, ended up getting laid off, saw an ad for a local car dealership, a Dodge dealership actually, looking for a car salesman. I was 19 at the time. I thought, I'm probably too young. I don't have any experience. My parents and my wife at the time, I was actually married, convinced me, oh, what the heck, go in there and see if they'll hire you. You never know until you ask. So I did. Went in and did indeed get hired. So that was the end of my future in going to Northwood Institute. I ended up going to a local community college part-time and sold cars. Was actually quite successful at it right out of the gate. Wow, that's fantastic. So did that prompt you to start the show? Well, that led to some other openings. One thing that happened is I was able to meet quite a few people being in the Detroit area that were in the auto industry and between that and my father's connection and all that. And then making a long story shorter, I ended up working for a company that was running a road show for General Motors, a variety of road shows, actually. I started out working in a fabrication shop. From there, we had created a huge display at that time was known as the GM Tuner Tour. And what it was was something you'd see at maybe a NASCAR track or Indianapolis, the big displays that were outside where they'd come in and promote their product. I oversaw the management of that and traveled throughout the country. From there, I ended up expanding my portfolio so that I was working with the Cadillac CTSV race team on their road show. Wow expanded over to the Ford Harley-Davidson side, and I did that, which meant I had to go out to Sturgis and Daytona and a variety of other events throughout the country. And that company had a different division, which was the company that puts on the World of Wheels and Autorama shows throughout the country. They were in need of a show manager, and I thought, huh, that might be a cool thing and ask about how that worked. And the suggestion was to come up for me to make the jump from the marketing side with the road shows over to management of World of Wheels and Autorama shows, which I did. That's really, really cool. So talk about your first envisionment of the Muscle Car and Sports Cars National Show. Well, what ended up happening is they purchased the show known as the Chevy Vet Fest in Chicago. Okay. I've always been a muscle car guy. And I thought when I went into the Chevy Vet Fest, being a single make show with a high focus on Corvettes, I thought, wow, this is a lot of fun. You know, this is really a cool deal. And and I loved it. The people were great on every side between the enthusiasm of the spectators and the participants. You go there to hear stories and share stories. And I thought that was just the neatest thing around. So as I was running that show, I thought, man, this could be applied to a variety of makes and models. You could really expand on this concept. That's where I put a lot of emphasis on the Camaros and the Chevelles along with the Corvettes and decided that it was time to kind of kick things up a notch and focus on higher quality cars and also on recruiting cars from outside of the general Chicago area. So I really wanted to offer the spectators a show that would give them something they hadn't seen locally at the cruise nights and the local shows. So that's kind of where that basic idea started. But then the expansion to the multi-make show that we have now came in that I did see the success in the show and thought, well, if you could break this up into different brands and make some models, then you could not only raise the level of quality for the vehicles in the show, but you could also appeal to a wider variety of spectators. Very true. All right, let's talk about that very first show, Bob. When was the first Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, you know, talk about how many people attended, how many people were actually in the show, and what year was the first show? 
Sure. Well, our first show was in 2009. And one thing that happened in between working for my former employer and the current regime is that I spent three years pitching the concept of doing a mix make show with an emphasis on higher end cars to my former employer for three years. And each year I'd come through with a nice presentation telling all the benefits of how this could work. First couple of years they shot it down and said, no, we're not quite ready for that. We don't think it's the time to do that. Okay. Well, the third year I had several years of success with the Chevy Vet Fest. The attendance was going up. The quality of the show was going up. thought, well, this is the year where they're going to go for it. This is where we're really going to kick things up a notch. And I went in, did my presentation, and lo and behold, they said, nah, we think this whole muscle car thing and this passion for the Corvettes is kind of dying, so we don't see any future in it. And I was like, what? <laughs> <You're kidding. laughs> so I went home depressed and sat down with my wife, and my wife said, you know what? Why don't you do it on your own? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, why don't we roll with the punches and give this a go? Because if you don't do it, you're going to be sorry for the rest of your life. Kids are set. They're comfortable. We don't have to worry about them anymore. We're financially okay. You've got some good friends and supporters that I think would be on board. So why don't we roll the dice and do it? I thought, well, that means no benefits. It means no guaranteed paycheck. But you know what? If you're up for it, I'm up for it. Let's do it. So I contacted a gentleman by the name of Stefano Bimby, who was my title sponsor for the Chevy Vet Fest. Told him what was going on and what our thoughts were. And he said, give me 24 hours. Give me a call back tomorrow. And I didn't really have any idea what he was thinking. I thought that he was going to offer me a job because he knew I was kind of depressed about the situation with my employer. Well, I called him back the next day and he said, you know that muscle car show you always dream of? Yeah. You ready to launch it? We've been talking about it. We're trying to figure out how to make this happen. But Jesus, it's a whole lot of money. And he goes, well, if I could tell you this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, we're ready to make a large deposit in your bank account. Would you put a year aside to launch the show the way you really want to do it? My jaw dropped and was like looking at a winning numbers on a lottery ticket. And I said, you're darn right I wouldn't. Well, lo and behold, by the end of the week, we were contacting the building and we had started up an LLC with partners and we were off and running to start the new Muscle Car and Corvette National Show. The rest is history, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Best thing I ever did in my life. I'm going to tell you. My group, what we call ourselves members, we don't call ourselves partners. Our group is made up of like-minded enthusiasts. And these guys are all successful business people in their own right. And they're also from across the country. So they're not all local Chicago or Detroit area guys. We've got one in New York, a couple out in Phoenix, one in California, one in Virginia, one in Chicago. So we're kind of a diverse group of guys. Each of the partners also have their own specific passion. One of them is Colin Comer, who's well known as a Shelby historian and author, and Stefano Bimby being the owner of Nikki Performance out in Chicago, and Steve Shogger, who's very passionate about original and unrestored cars. These guys all bring something to the table that makes our show different than anything out there. Right out of the gate in 2009, I guess you could say it was a bunch of networking where these guys and myself were out calling and beating the bushes to get people to bring quality cars from out of state to get the show launched and come out with a bang. We didn't want to just have a show that had 10 or 12 good cars and a couple hundred average cars. We came out of the gate. I can remember the first GT40 that we had confirmed. And then it was like, okay, here's the fifth or sixth Yanko. Here's another heavy car. It was absolutely amazing lineup that we had right out of the gate. We hit the ground running. That's amazing. What a great story, Bob. Now, it's held every year, obviously. Tell us what city you're in and what the venue is. Yeah, we're actually in Rosemont, Illinois. Although we're known as the Chicago show, it's suburban Chicago. We're about a half hour outside of downtown. And Rosemont is right by O'Hare Airport. Oh. And that was one of the reasons we chose that area is because of the proximity to the airport. And the neatest thing about that community is they've really embraced what we do. There is a wide variety of not only hotels and restaurants, but just about anything else you could ever want within walking distance. One of the things I'd learned from producing shows is sometimes 
sometimes people bring people along that may not necessarily have as much enthusiasm or passion as you and I have. Right. Maybe wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever the case may be that are like, yeah, yeah. another car show. Okay. Well, Rosemont has what they call the Rosemont Entertainment District. And in that, they've got indoor skydiving, a movico movie theater, a wide variety of restaurants that range anywhere from Burger King on up to steakhouses. There's a 130-store outlet mall within walking distance. That, in the proximity to O'Hare and a wide variety of hotels, which means I get to beat the hotels up and get great rates, made it the perfect place for what we do. That's fantastic. And what is the venue that you hold it in? It's called the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center, right on North River Road in Rosemont. Like our host hotels, we actually have six official host hotels. Five of them are right across the street. The other one is just a couple blocks away. You you just walk outside of your hotel room right in the convention center. It's a beautiful convention center. And we occupy about 400,000 square feet. That's amazing. Well, talk about the setup of the show, Bob, because well, you've got muscle cars, you've got Corvettes. Do you mix them together or do the Corvettes have their own area? Well, that's kind of a yes and no answer. Every year I do a wide variety of special and invitational displays. Among those, there's a couple that are Corvette specific and one that we're really, really proud of. We have what is known as the Triple Diamond Competition. And the Triple Diamond, which is sponsored by Corvette Central, is something that the best of the best Corvettes compete for. It's a very tough judging criteria set up for that. All applicants for that must first acquire an NCRS Top Flight Award and Bloomington Gold Certification. So that kind of tells you right out of the gate, you're going to get the best of the best that are applying for this. Our incentive for people to get their cars out there and show them, and of course, show with Guy Larson out at Bloomington Gold, and then going to the NCRS events, and then giving you a goal to hit those events, and then to come to us for kind of the crowning glory with our Triple Diamond. So that has grown into one of the biggest features of our show, and we set that up as a timeline. So every year, I'll take the earliest model that we get. We generally do get 53s and 4s and 5s. I think just about every year we've had at least a 53 or 54 and sometimes multiples. And then we'll set those up chronologically to tell the story of the Corvette. So that's a really neat and fun display. And this past year, we had our largest field of contenders. We had nearly 50 contenders for Triple Diamond. It was a sight to see. I mean, just to stand there and see these cars lined up in chronological order is just so much fun. It's really a neat display in itself. Then we also do another display, which I actually change up every year. That's called Corvette Legends. And what I'll do is come up with a particular theme that, again, is different every year to keep it fresh, of some sort of special variation of the Corvette. So in the past, we've done L88 displays. We've done Z06 display one year. This year, I'm really excited because we've got something I've been kind of working on for a while with a gentleman out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he has assembled a collection of tankers. And he has every year. 63 to 67 tanker and he is going to bring out six of his from his collection so that's the basis for our corvette legends display this year that sounds amazing well bob let's take our final break and in segment number three we're going to talk about this year's muscle car and corvette nationals here on corvette today american hydrocarbon your one-stop shop for custom interior exterior and engine bay items for your c4 through c8 corvette We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. We've served customers in over 28 countries all around the world. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 mid-engine Corvette or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. Our products have been featured in VET and Corvette magazines, so give us a call. 813-476-5638. That's 813-476-5638. And now we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products with a C8 Corvette. That includes the front splitter, the side skirts, engine appearance panels, and engine fluid caps. See everything on our new updated website, AmericanHydrocarbon.com. Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up there. At True Wealth & Company, we take that to heart. 
See, at True Wealth and Company, we believe your retirement lifestyle travels through two doors. Door number one, the blue door, gives you more options, financial freedom. Your money outlives you. Every happiness you wish for in life is through the blue door. Door number two, the red door, is where you outlive your money. You rely on family, friends, or even the state to take care of you. At True Wealth and Company, we're not just financial planners. The best way to walk through the blue door is to have a written plan. Make a work optional lifestyle a reality with our proprietary True Life Map formula. Look towards your future with anticipation, not apprehension. Having a rock solid fiduciary partner like True Wealth and Company is essential to effective financial planning. There's no winging it, there's nothing left to chance. Look, we don't want you to become another Yogi Berraism. Give us a call today at 913 653 True. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Start your financial independence and work optional lifestyle today. 913 653 8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Hey, thank you very much for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is the managing partner of the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, Bob Ashton. In this final segment, we're going to talk about today's show. Now, Bob, where is the show for 2022 and where can people buy tickets? Absolutely. We're at the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center, which is in Rosemont, Illinois. And it's suburban Chicago. It's about a half an hour outside of Chicago, right off of 294. And tickets go on sale in October. Okay. You can buy tickets online through our website. It is a public show, so you can come right into the box office in the lobby and purchase your tickets on site. Very nice. All right. How does an owner enter and register for the show? So, you know, like discuss the process that they go through to be accepted to exhibit at the show. Well, it's gotten to the point now where I pretty much hand select almost every car in the show. So it's become somewhat of an invitational type thing. And we'll have about 530 to 550 cars in the show. And of those, probably 400 or more will be ones that I've handpicked and that I've recruited through going to shows and working with various collectors that we've formed relationships over the years. But you can apply online. You know, we're always looking for the best of the best and we're always looking for fresh cars, especially I give a lot of emphasis to cars that are rarely and sometimes never shown to the public because a lot of times people will come out from private collections where they don't usually go to the regular car shows and that. So that's kind of what we spotlight those cars that aren't normally seen by the public. Very cool. Now talk about some of the vendors that exhibit there at the show as well because it's not just car shows. You can see vendors there at the show as well. Absolutely. And what I really pride myself on is the fact that we are 100% automotive related. One of our primary sponsors our, our presenting sponsor is Bill Stasek Chevrolet. And the team out there, Jeremy Stasek and the crew, are prime Corvette. They're one of the largest Corvette dealers in the country. So they've been with us since our inception. And they have a fantastic display. Again, kind of chronicles the Corvette. They'll bring in some older ones. And they always have the newest and the latest. And they're a Callaway dealer, too. So that's a really fun thing to see. Corvette Central is our sponsor for our Triple Diamond. They're always there with a, fully supporting what we do. But as far as regular vendors go, we are automotive related. So you're going to see a wide variety of car stuff, memorabilia, automobilia, and all that. I really pride myself in the fact that we don't have, as I call, uh, headset hawkers or travel agencies. You come in there, you're going to see the best of the best from the automotive world. And it's really neat because it gives you a great opportunity to interact with people face to face and meet these people that are hands on, you know, whether they're selling NOS parts or the latest in die cast and memorabilia and that, you're going to see the best of the best at our show. Very cool. Man, that's amazing. Now, do people sometimes sell their muscle cars or Corvettes during the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals? There is a lot of wheeling and dealing going on. Now, we do have two areas that are specific to car sales. I have what I call a VIP car corral. That will generally have eight to 10 very high-end premium cars that apply with us. That's in what we call our VIP car corral. And then I have a standard, we call it the car corral, which is located at the back of the show. And even that, we screen those cars. So it's not a matter of just sending in your check and bringing in your old beater and putting it on the floor. It's got to be a good prime collectible car. That will usually have about, oh, anywhere from 15 to 20 cars that are being offered for sale. Wow, that's nice. Now, talk more about the awards as well, because that Triple Diamond is a cool deal. Talk about that process and how the awards are handed out. 
one of the other things that may be a little different than a lot of shows is that we have such diversity in our judging and we actually offer what we call a non-judged pick eligible category. And this is something I'd learned from working for the other company. We never put cars against each other directly. So cars are judged on their own merit. They're judged as bronze, silver, and gold level. It's a point system. So gold level award would be 950 points or higher. In the case of the concourse classes, it's very, very intense. And they'll start out with a four-page judging sheet. Cars are judged inside, outside, underneath by our team of mark specialists. In other words, if you have a Corvette, say you have a C2, it's being judged by C2 specialists. You don't have a guy who would look at a Mustang and then come over and look at your Corvette. So you're getting premium, high quality, and very intense judging when it comes to our Concours and Concours Day 2 type judging. Then we have what we call Super Street. Super Street is more of a fit and finish type thing. So that's something that you'd want to have if the car was not restored to factory stock. So maybe you did a color change or maybe it's a pro modified car. We'll have a few of those in the show also. Huh. That's a fit and finish type thing. But one of the things I learned from my previous employer was I never, as I say, put cars in a first, second, third type thing. So we do go by levels, bronze, silver, gold. Now, you can have two cars side by side. Say you have 267, 427, 435 Corvettes that are side by side. Guy on the right might score 999. He could have a close to perfect car. Guy on the left might have scored 951. So he just squeaked his way into a gold. Now, those guys know what they got. But we don't publish that number. We just publish the level. Okay. It's up to the owner whether they want to disclose that. Some other things we do, we do what's called vintage certification. Vintage certification is designed, as we say, it's all about preservation instead of restoration. So some might refer to these cars as survivors. The emphasis is put on documenting and looking and inspecting cars that are unrestored. So that's a special section that we have, and that's been a hit that has really taken off with the popularity of unrestored cars. And we have two ultra high levels of judging, which are called pinnacle and milestone. A pinnacle and milestone is designed for those very few people that will restore a car back to originally as it was when it left the assembly line. What that means is might have some coarse paint. It might have a couple of runs in the paint. The undercoating might be a little sloppy, but it also has a requirement that all parts must be OEM, original, no reproduction parts right down to the tire. That's a super, super high, very, very intense three to four hour judging on a lift type of standard. We have Pinnacle for Shelby's and Ford's and we have Milestone for other brands, including Corvettes. So that's something new that we launched last year. That's amazing. Some people we realize love to show their cars, but they don't necessarily need another award. So our non-judged pick eligible category is for people that basically just want to go out and share their cars in the store and have some fun and not have to worry about the car being judged. So that's been very popular. And instead of just making it a non-judge category, we hand out about 80 to 100 pick awards. In fact, when you're joining us in November, you're going to be one of the guys that's going to have to pick out your favorites. So we use our celebrities and magazine editors and some of our staff members. They will choose a car purely because they like it, not because it's got the best members matching drivetrain or the shiniest paint. Maybe something that's up some memories. As I say, this would be something that I would have you do when you attend a show and have a pick award that you would present. Well, Bob, I'm ready. I'm coming in November, so I'll be happy to do that. That'll be exciting. I'd love to do that. Talk about some of the celebrities that you've had at the shows. Well, again, there, our focus is always on the car people. So this past November, we had a blast. I had what I call the legends of drag racing. So we brought a bunch of the 60s and 70s drag racers. We had Butch Leo. We had Arnie Beswick. Again, there, we did one of our panel discussions. So we're very car related. Over the years, Courtney Hansen of Overhaul and Fame and now our new show, she joins us on a fairly regular basis. So we have a lot of fun with her. As I say, our emphasis is always on car people. Having car people get the spotlight and be able to share their knowledge and their enthusiasm for what we're all about. Just having a lot of fun. That sounds great. Boy, talk about some of the seminars that you have during the show. 
Absolutely. Again, there, we really focus on the hobby. We do a lot of drag race and road race type things. We're not so much into the technical end as far as our seminars and panel discussions. One of the things, again, you know, talking about having some fun interaction, we did something which I plan on continuing to do throughout the years that focuses on the younger enthusiasts. We want to make sure that this hobby has some legs to it. So we put together a panel discussion last year that had a group of six younger enthusiasts. They range in age from 13 on up to 22. We had two young ladies. One that races in the pure stock division, another who restored a duster with her father. And we had our youngest actual car owner, meaning he really, I guess he couldn't have his name on the title because he was too young. But at 13 years old, Christoph came in with his 65 Barracuda. So we thought it'd be pretty neat to have him tell a little bit about how he got into the hobby and how much passion he has for what we do. How cool is that? That's amazing. We also do informative seminars. We had Bruce Shaw do a really neat seminar this past year that told a little bit about what to look for when you're buying a car online, the do's and don'ts. Our good friend John Craman always does a seminar with us, and we've had him do a variety of seminars over the years, ranging from auction highlights and what to buy, what to look for, and trends in the upcoming years as far as what's going on in our hobby. And Jim Madison from Pontiac Historic Services has done various seminars over the years. I was just on the phone yesterday with a gentleman talking about a very special 1963 Tempest that was raced back in the day. He has a very interesting race history that will be joining us this coming year for discussion about the historical aspect of that car. That's cool. I love the variety that you've got. And I know you you talked briefly about the kids. I know kids are an important part of what you try to do at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Talk about the things that kids can do while the show is going on. Well, they really are. And much like what we were saying earlier when we were talking about having spouses that come along that may not have as much passion or enthusiasm. I'm a grandfather now, and I'm fortunate in that I have a pretty car-savvy group of grandkids and a son who's very active. He shares my enthusiasm and passion for the hobby, too. Maybe because I'm a grandparent now, I'm starting to recognize that these kids that we get to come to the show, we need to make sure they make this something they want to do every year. So we've been really, really big on having a wide variety of activities for kids. They range anywhere from just a simple coloring contest, which really isn't a contest. It's not a competition. It's for fun. We do Hot Wheels races. We do a model car make and take, which is real fun, where kids can come in and we give them a free model car kit. And we have a gentleman by the name of Charlie Kroll, who's a master model builder, who'll sit and he helps them. He doesn't build the cars for them, but he'll give them a little bit of assistance. It's kind of designed to plant that seed where it's like, hey, there's some cool stuff here. That is cool. We do a scavenger hunt with our sponsors where all the sponsors jump on board and give out neat prizes. And they actually give out some pretty cool stuff. So all designed to keep the passion alive and to give these kids something to look forward to every year. And it's really been rewarding for me because in our 13 years of producing the show, I've seen some of these kids come in where they're kind of dragged along when they were five or six years old. And now they're like, either they're getting ready to work on a real car, or in some cases, they're so looking forward to coming back and building another model car or getting in some of the cars with the Haggerty Youth Judging Program that we do. And so people ask me, is there a future in the hobby? I can tell you there absolutely is. We're seeing more young people that are getting involved than we ever have. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%, Bob. Talk about your social media outlets and how someone can contact you, Bob. Of course, we've got a website, which is real simple. It's just our business name shortened. So it's M-C-A-C-N, which stands for Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals.com. We're on Facebook, same thing. It's just Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. I try to put something on there every day. There's just so much going on all year round with our show between exciting cars that have entered and people that are joining us and all that. So it's not too hard to post something every day of the year, 365 days. You can always get the most up-to-date information on our Facebook page. Our website is pretty informative and it's got some photo galleries and information about judging and hotel links, all kinds of information that you can use and all the common questions and whatnot. We work real hard to keep it up to date. That's mcacn.com and Facebook. You can just look us up as Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Perfect. Well, Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to be on Corvette today. I really look forward to seeing you in November up in Rosemont. 
I appreciate you having the opportunity to spread the word. And you are overdue, and we look forward to having you come and join us. I'm going to get you up there to do a little panel discussion and some seminars, too. I think there's a lot of knowledge that you could share that people would like to hear. I'd be thrilled and excited to do that. That sounds like a date. Done deal. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today. And please be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today podcast. And also thanks to our flagship sponsors, MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels. Get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.